Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for being here with me. How are you doing? Let me know in the comments section. How are you right now at this point in time? I feel more like up and down than ever. And you know, with this whole like quarantine situation going on as long as it has, I feel like I'm quicker to get exhausted. I feel like my patience level is running thinner than it was before. The kids sometimes like if we're having a lull where there's not some kind of organized time to do something, they're quicker to just like roam around aimlessly and like get into stuff. Like I go out into the kitchen and Nookie's in the junk drawer. Like why? I don't know, just venting with you all. I need more nice weather days to just like get out and just breathe some fresh air, you know? And I want to like hug my mom and dad. I'm just missing all the normal things right now. But a reminder, if you are home and safe at home would be that is a privilege, you know? That could maybe be a thought right there that centers you back to where you need to be. But it's going to be a great day. We're going to start things off with a little hard candy smoothing primer balm. I just thought today I would throw on the camera while I get ready. Um, I have no particular direction right at this time. It's just a very like normal how I get ready type of day. But I did decide to give myself the parameters of making it an all drugstore look. Love that primer, by the way, if you're looking for something super similar to Tatcha's, I think this is the most similar, the Smoothing Primer Balm from Hard Candy. Then for a foundation, I've used this a few times. I don't think I've ever used it on camera, but it is the Hard Candy, it's the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, the dewy version. So, um, I don't know, let's just figure it out, you know? It's got the little spatula dabber on here, which always makes me really like wondering how much am I actually getting on the skin right now? Seems like it's dabbing on a lot. But I really wanna pay attention to what kind of coverage I'm getting with this today and just the overall look. It might be a little warm in tone, but not bad. Okay, got a ton on my forehead. <laughs> We're gonna have to redistribute. I feel like my camera's making me look way, like, orangey. I don't think I'm that orangey in person. Okay, I think this is kind of a nice look, like a pretty finish. I do see the dewiness thing, but I don't feel like insanely tacky to the touch, so that's kind of nice. That's actually not a bad foundation for medium coverage, you know, that's pretty good. Then I'm gonna use my Hydrating Camo Concealer from e.l.f. Let's bust this out. I haven't used this in a few days. I do understand the feeling that maybe during these times you don't even want to put on makeup or mess with it or take the time. Um, but to me, it does like, it gives me a certain kind of boost. Number one, I think it's just the act of taking a little time for yourself. Um, to put on the makeup that gives you a boost. Just carving out some form of me time that you can have. I think that does something good for a person, but then also like you catch yourself in the mirror midday and you're like, hey, you know, that's, that's looking good. Okay, I love that hydrating camo concealer. The texture of that looks so smooth and natural and it's meshing really well with the look of the Wet n Wild, by the way. Also, what's happening? Back here, yeah, I got a little loop. I tried to do some form of a bun today and it's not really wanting to be there. For my setting powder, I'm gonna reach for my Maybelline Fit Me. This is the fair shade. Kind of the most similar to a Laura Mercier loose powder, if you're into that. And pick some up with my e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush. And I do really like to set that hydrating concealer. Just enhances the look of smoothness, improves the staying power. Kind of press it in here. And I feel like I'm not losing tons of dewiness because I'm really not putting on that much powder. But there are certain areas that just benefit from some powder, y'all. There we go. Keep it light. Keep it just where you need it. Next, I think I'm going to hit the dollar store for my Believe Beauty bronzer. This is the Tahitian Sun shade. It's got a little bit of glow. It's a really good tone. Um, it can contour for you. I need to bust out some more of my Believe Beauty stuff from time to time because I do have like even a few newer things that were sent my way. Guys, I went old school the other day. I made a tater tot casserole. I don't know why, I just, it, it came up in my Pinterest feed, honestly, and I'm like, oh, okay, that looks pretty good. And it wasn't just 
the regular kind that I think incorporates cream of mushroom soup or whatever. It was the kind, it was like a Mexican take on it. And it was really, really hearty. It had like corn and black beans and tomatoes and the ground beef as well, like in the lower part. And then you've got some tater tots on top, which is kind of satisfying line up all the tater tots. And then that always brings Bub and I into the conversation of is it casserole or is it hot dish? He's from North Dakota originally, so it's hot dish to him. I feel like that bronzer looks really, really good. Um, it's a very natural looking bronzer. I love how it catches the light very, very minimally, but it still does. Like, I think it's working well with this look if we're trying to maintain the look of a little bit of dewy skin. Oh, I'm excited to pull out this blush today, my Butter Blush in the shade Saucy Mauve. If you like a nice glowy blush, perk your ears up, come over to your computer screen. This is a really, really pretty one. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Seriously, how pretty is this? This maybe could be a shade that's duping something in my Beauty Bakery palette. I kind of mentioned maybe I could come up with some dupes for the Cotton Candy Champagne blushes. And a lot of you seem to be interested in that. <laughs> Blush is simply life-giving. I love that. Isn't that pretty? See, we're keeping with the glow. So I usually um, talk about this little Milani shade here, the Afterglow, or the Strobe Light Highlighter in the shade Afterglow. But I also found this shade, it's called Moon Glow. And as I hold them here, I'm like, they look almost identical. I think um, this one has a little more hint of pink in it, and this one actually looks a little more golden. I wanna pop that on and analyze further. Oh, it's such a great formula, though, these Milani highlights. I mean, they're going to charge, like, what, around about $10 for one of these, but it's good. That's rather intense. I really didn't have that much on my brush. Um, now I'm going to get some up on the forehead area, which I think is essential to keeping some continuity of glow all over the face. Put a little on the cupid's bow. Nice and glowy, I'm liking it so far. And I'm gonna use some of my e.l.f. hydrating coconut mist over top here. Mm. Oh, that's a good scent. That is refreshing. Now we're gonna do some brows and I'm using my Physician's Formula Brow Last. What shade do I wear this in? Dark brown. And I've talked about this a lot before, but it's kind of a nice all-encompassing brow product. Um, you got your brush, you've got your little spoolie that's gonna work it on through. Um, but it is a little touchy to use. Like you could goop up a lot of product real quick in the brows. So you might wanna take a moment as I do to kind of work some product off of this little angled brush. But it's kind of like using a pomade. Once you're used to it, you'll get through it pretty fast and it does have pretty nice hold. Oh, another recipe I'm planning to try Maybe tonight, um, I've got the stuff to try to make my own Panera broccoli cheddar soup. Oh my gosh, that doesn't mean I'm pregnant, guys. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. <laughs> uh, I know that's been a big pregnancy craving of mine over time, but I just really like it in general. And uh, there are so many like copycat recipes out there. So I think I'm gonna definitely try to do that. It's an instant pot recipe. So we'll see how that goes. I'll report back probably on Instagram. So check there. Also on Instagram, I do share like every morning I've been sharing, you know, what the lesson is of the day that we're trying to do our little school from home sort of thing for Belle. Um, and she's just in pre-K and I'm not like trying to become a teacher or something like that, but I am trying to still keep with what she really loved, which was kind of the structure of pre-K, and she was really into it, and I just hated to see that completely fall away, you know, now that there's not technically any school anymore. So I, we do kind of a mix of sometimes there's suggested activities that the teachers pass along, and we work those in, and we come up with our own ideas sometimes. If you ever come up with a good idea for like a little lesson, and then you're wondering like, like how can we make this artsy? How can we turn out a craft maybe or some kind of creation on this? Definitely look to Pinterest. We get a lot of ideas there. Milani eyeshadow primer. And also YouTube, like there are so many fantastic videos. If you're studying like, okay, life cycle of a butterfly, you know, the caterpillar to butterfly thing, you'll find an amazing, specifically geared toward kids educational video on that. And I think 
it's important to acknowledge that kids do learn in layers. You know, maybe there's something you sit down and you sit right there in front of them and you describe how it goes. Or maybe you can exhibit it with pictures or something like that. But then in a video, having a nice little sum up that you can find on YouTube is really, really cool. And like the other day we did crayons and how are crayons made. And there's some great stuff on YouTube for that to actually watch how they're made in the factory, you know? I think we wanna do more how it's made stuff because that's really interesting. And it kind of makes a kid appreciate a little bit more where their stuff is coming from. Not like, oh, we just have crayons out of thin air. We just always have crayons, crayons, crayons. I've been very sincerely asked by quite a few people to work in my Wants palette some more, and I will do that today, y'all. I do think it's a really nice springy palette option, actually. I think it's got some beautiful pastels and all kinds of things going on in here. So yeah, let's go for it. Let's have some fun. I'm going to start off with prayer. This is a great kick things off crease color, and I'm using my Profusion ES2 brush right now. So we're wedging that pretty rosiness right here in the crease. And this is a matte shade, by the way. There's several really, really nice started off kind of crease colors. We got Hobby, we got Prayer, we got some more warmth over here along the side. Now, I think I'm gonna do a little splash of some spring green on the lid with Grateful. So I'm gonna pick that up with my flat brush here. And look at that beautiful shade. Just give it a little kind of swiping motion. It responds so well to that. And it looks kind of pretty alongside the rose. This is maybe the kind of look that you could get out of that Venus XL palette has all the roses and the greens. But the pretty thing about that is everything's done in really soft tones. I think that makes it just so appealing and so pretty to look at. Okay, booyah, there's Grateful. That is so pretty, oh my gosh. Then we're gonna take a little Oh Heavens right here. Our nice, beautifully textured, um, shimmery highlight. Might be better off calling it more of like a pearlescent highlight. It's not too metallic at all, but it gives you that little like turning on the lights effect right here on the inner corner if you want that. And then I think it might be logical to go in with a dark green here, but maybe we could switch it up a little bit. I'm instead, I think, gonna take some Pi Fi here, our beautiful, rich wine color. And we'll dab that on the outside. This is a matte and it blends in super beautifully with Prayer, that first shade we got in the crease. I don't know that I've worn it a lot alongside Grateful, but they're kind of a pretty combo here. I'm not wanting to go super dramatic, but I'm just wanting a little splash of color. So now when I do something like that, where I've patted it on the lid and I've kind of wedged it into the crease as well, um, it's a good time, I think, to pull in a crease type brush and just let that product move around a little bit try to get everything a bit more blended. I say bit a lot. <laughs> but it's funny, sometimes I get asked like, can you do more things with your Once palette? And I just, maybe I just feel funny like <laughs> trying to work in a palette with my name on it very often, but yet I look back on my um, playlist where I've kept everything I've done with this palette in one playlist, and there's like 14 videos on it. Like I've used this so much in videos, more than I even realize, I think, but maybe not a lot recently, so you got me there. Uh, let's take a little more grateful and now I'm just sort of dabbing it over the seam, you know what I mean, where those shades meet. I want it to just keep standing out. Oh, I think that's super pretty. I love what's happening there. And then I got my little ES6 from Profusion, the small pointed eyeshadow brush. This can be great outer corner or under the eye. And I think I'm gonna go back to Pi Fi. And by the way, you're seeing my really marked up palette there. I've done like palette bingo with it. I've gouged it. I've marked on it in various ways. So it's not the prettiest looking one. How bizarre is it that I actually have a palette being sold in Ulta with my name on it? That's crazy. That still doesn't quite seem real. <laughs> okay, now we've got that blended in on the lower part of the eye. Do I want to do more? I'm just really pleased with where we're at, so I think I'm going to stop there. I'm going to take actually a little bit of some infallible liner here. I lost my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight, otherwise that would be getting used right now. I need to order another one. Next up, we're just going to curl the lashes. I don't feel like doing a big liner. I really like the splash of uh, soft green that I've got going on on the lid, so I'm not going to cover that in any way. We're just 
gonna go for a nice full lash. So to do that, I'm gonna take my Milani primer. This is the violet one. And I do like how that loads up, like in such a huge contrast to that Rimmel one I was talking about in my Rimmel video. This is what you want a primer to do, like really, really thicken the lashes. The only lash primer out there that I can totally get on board with that does not appear to be doing much, but it really is doing something, is the Little Black Primer from Estee Lauder. That one is giving it maximum effort, although it looks just very, very natural as you pop it on. God, I love makeup. I mean, it's you sit down and it really is like playtime. If you go into doing your makeup with the mentality that you can play and do what Whatever the heck you want. Like, it's so much fun. Oh, I think I got a baby that's teething now, officially. We had a nighttime wake up last night. It caused both Bub and I to get up. Like, he was just unrelenting, crying, and didn't even want to nurse. Like, started to come close to it and then started crying. I feel like that's a telltale sign that teething's starting because they got that sensitivity in their gums. And whereas feeding or nursing might be their classic, like, comfort move, they feel like they can't do it. And it made him cry even more because he probably, like, had no clue why, why does my mouth hurt? I could just tell because he you know he's not sick or anything like that he really doesn't have any kind of other symptom but he's drooling a ton these days and it should be about that time where we're starting to see some some trouble with it okay I got a drugstore mascara open here we've got the covergirl exhibitionist so I'm just gonna throw that on over top of my primer now I've made sure my primer is dry because I don't want any mixing or watering down to happen here. This is the fun part, coating up your primer. I miss L'Oreal Double Extend. I mean, I think there's some form of double extend still available, but I'm talking the one that was just like gold on one end, white on the other. Used it in college all the time. Never ever put on false lashes in college. It wasn't before false lashes were a thing because I know they've been a thing for quite a long time, but I don't know, you just didn't see people using them. I remembered being really scared during that time of even thinking of approaching doing false lashes, but I didn't have YouTube either. Like if I had instructional videos to go to, I'd have maybe started doing more things a lot sooner. What am I doing? Am I flipping my wrist? Who am I? What is this quarantine doing to me? Alrighty, then on the lips, I think I'm gonna use my Maybelline Super Stay Ink Crayon. This is in the color called Lead the Way. It's gonna be playing off of kind of the rosy wine color that's emerging there from the crease. So let's pop this on. I love the formula in the ink crayons. It always kind of surprises me when I make contact with the lips, like just how smooth it is and how thin it actually feels. It's like it's just kind of melting down on the lips on contact, but it's gonna stay beautifully. Love that shade. What a wearable shade. The only other thing I think I need to do is pop on a bit more Saucy Mauve. Just a little more color in the cheeks. And then of course you also get a little more glow. I don't mind that either. Okay, but there's my take on springtime at the drugstore. Spring... <laughs> Springtime at the drugstore. Oh, don't you love a lovely springtime inside a drugstore? Springtime from the drugstore, on my face. I'm liking it. I'll be interested to see the wear of the dewy foundation from Wet n Wild because as I said, I've worn it a handful of times, have not really kept close tabs on it, but I feel like the finish was really nice without feeling super sticky. Like I could tell the dewiness was there, but it wasn't overwhelming. It looked great, especially once that e.l.f. concealer came on. Tried to pull in very powder products then that would kind of support that glow, like a bronzer that had a little glow, um, my blush, and of course the highlighter, very glowy. But yet my skin feels one nice even texture, so I think I'm gonna have good staying power all day long. Of course the Once palette on the eyes, that lovely pistachio green there on the lids, feels pretty springy to me. Thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it here. I hope you're doing well, and I will see you again soon. Bye guys.